Blog Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Edie Summers, and I'm really feeling very blessed today. Um, I have a really special guest in the studio, um, Zach Toth. We're going to be talking about his not only his website, travelbetic.com, but also just about how Zach has lived, has always lived, a life unscripted, chasing adventure and longing to travel this world's far corners, even with a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes in 2013. So I'm going to bring Zach into the studio in just a few moments here. First, I'm going to introduce him. Again, his website is travelbetic.com. That's T-R-A-V-E-L-B-E-T-I-C. And I met Zach on Twitter and was just really inspired. And so I invited him onto my show, and he's here in the studio with us. I'll bring him on in just a few minutes. Um, Like I mentioned, Zach has always lived a life unscripted, chasing adventure and longing to travel this world's far corners A diagnosis with type 1 diabetes in 2013 did little to dampen his spirit. Though diabetes can be physically and emotionally demanding, Zach refuses to be held back by his diagnosis and continues to travel, chasing waves, following bands, and living life on his own terms. Through Travelbetic, Zach hopes to challenge the stereotypes about type 1 diabetes and inspire others to overcome life's obstacles and lead a healthy life through travel and adventure, as well as, as well as raise awareness about type 1 diabetes and debunk common myths surrounding the disease. Before diabetes, Zach cruised through life as if he were invincible, hucking himself fearlessly into every exciting escapade he could dream up, giving little regard to physical health or well-being. Then, on his 22nd birthday, his life changed forever. After two blurry days lying in bed, nearly unconscious, Zach was rushed to the emergency room. Doctors immediately recognized the signs of diabetic ketoacidosis and diagnosed him with type 1 diabetes. Zach and his family were distraught and confused. The general understanding of type 1 was that only children were diagnosed. This obviously wasn't true, and so he geared up to take over the job of his pancreas administering multiple insulin injections every day for the rest of his life. Faced with his own mortality, Zach had a choice. He could heed the caution counseled by his healthcare team and live a relatively dormant life in order to ensure proper care of this incurable disease, or he could see diagnosis with diabetes as a challenge and continue his adventurous ways, exploring the world and pushing his boundaries. Zach chose the latter, and has adapted his diabetes care to fit his life instead of the other way around. Diabetes served as a wake-up call for Zach, a realization that it is up to him to take care of his body, his temple for his soul. Since diagnosis, he has adopted a low-carb diet, taken up a daily yoga practice, and made exercise a priority. Zach no longer feels that sense of invincibility Diabetes constantly reminds him that death is very real and that every day is not promised. But he believes that death is not to be marveled at. Instead, the very fact that we are alive is the marvel, and we must take advantage of the time we are given. We must not go gentle into that good night. We must rage, rage against the dying of the light. And again, as I mentioned, through travelbetic.com, I encourage you to go check out his website. It's awesome. Um, Zach challenges common misperceptions about the limitations diabetes places on an individual and offers encouragement and tips for other diabetics to get out into the world and challenge themselves and their personal limits. Zach believes adventure has a healing power far greater than any traditional medicine. Adventure trains us to expect and accept mishaps and manage risk. 
It teaches us that shortcomings and tremendous challenges are inevitable and helps us to feel less victimized by our situation. So on that very inspirational note, I'm going to welcome Zach into the studio. Hi, Zach. How are you today? Good, Edie. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks. Um, okay. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, my pleasure. So, so Zach, where are you currently in the world? I am <laughs> currently in Galveston, Texas. Oh, awesome! A, a, little, a little island just near Texas, not quite on it. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And so, yeah. so how often do you do you travel? Like, can you give us like paint us a picture of what your life is like? Um. Well, it's never a consistent <laughs> painting. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 I guess I'd have to relate it to sort of a Jackson Pollock. Um, really, just travel okay. as much as possible. Uh, a lot of yeah. uh, I do a lot of travel to Central America, to the Caribbean. Uh, I kind of like to say that I'm I'm conquering the world one region at a time. Uh, I'm currently working on <laughs> getting to every every country in Central America and every island in the Caribbean. Wow. Uh, check quite a few off wow. that list. But yeah, I, uh, mm-hmm. I tend to travel at least a handful of times a year, um, you know, spend, okay. spend at least three or four months a year trying to travel and doing a lot of just smaller stuff within the States. Uh, really enjoy music festivals and, and getting out there and, and hanging out with all my friends, camping and listening to music. So that takes up a lot of my travel time is, is traveling oh, nice. around the car yeah. full of stuff and seeing some good music. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so are you, and then are you raising awareness for type 1 diabetes along the way? Is that, I mean, I know that your Absolutely. website is. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So, One of the ways... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, so one of the ways that I really uh, try to raise awareness is, is by just honestly being diabetic in public and not having any sort of shame mm-hmm. about what I have to do to simply stay alive. Um, you know, yeah. Checking my blood sugar and, and, admin, and administering an injection in public, is, it, you know, it's, it's eye-opening to people. People don't see that every day. They don't see somebody yeah. stabbing themselves True. with a needle at, at lunch, and so... I think really just by, you know, losing that shame and being diabetic in public can really mm-hmm. raise awareness about it because I get a lot of questions asked, you know, what are you doing, what is that? And, and I think just by, mm-hmm. by refusing to be ashamed of my diabetes and, and just taking it with me along the way, you know, I don't see it as something that keeps me from things. I see it as part of me, you know, it, it's part of who I am. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, I absolutely, yeah. as, I'm, uh, as I'm traveling, I'm always – raising awareness, uh, talking as much as I can about it. And, uh, it's, it's a new thing to me, so I still really enjoy educating people on just what diabetes is, the difference between the types. So, yeah, I would say absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's, that's one of my big goals as I travel. Mm-hmm. And so a couple things there. So, so at Zach, so you were diagnosed at the age of 22, and then yes. so you said it's new for you. So are you, are you still in your early 20s then? I am 24. You're 24. Okay. So, yeah, and I really appreciate two and a half years. Yes. Yeah. And then I I really appreciate how you were saying, like, just sort of, you know, kind of making it, like, it just, like, kind of making it part of your life. Like, it's, um, like, my brother has type 1 diabetes, and um, I I appreciate um, how you're saying you just, you know, sort of, like, just take your insulin out in public and... I just I just love that you just kind of like weave it into your to your life and just kind of take the stigma out of it. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Right. And then, do you mind? Would you be able to explain to people like the difference between type one and type two diabetes? I know you have sure. it on your website too, but I think there is oh, no, I, I think there is confusion over it. Absolutely. Um, you know, everybody when they hear diabetes, yeah. they think of the diabetes that they have been shown on television. They think of, mm-hmm. you know, oh, Coca-Cola gives you diabetes. Drinking too much sugar gives you diabetes. You get diabetes when you're old. And so when I tell people I have diabetes, they look at me and go, wow, you're so young and fit. I'm like, well, yeah, that's, mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing I could have done to prevent myself from getting type 1 diabetes. And that's one of the major differences mm-hmm. between the types is that type 2 usually, not always, comes on later in life and for the most part is caused by, you know, poor health choices caused, uh, you know, just, mm-hmm. just by living a relatively unhealthy life. Uh, but not always, there are people, you know, that's not a blanket that statement. There, there are people that mm-hmm. are just randomly diagnosed with type two, but type one just happens. They, they're still completely, mm-hmm. you know, 50 percent unsure of how it even comes about. And like, I woke up one day and had type one diabetes and there's nothing I or anybody else that has it could do it. 
And the main difference between the two is type 2 diabetes is insulin resistant, meaning the body, the pancreas, still creates beta cells that create insulin, meaning the body still has okay. insulin, but something is going wrong to where the body isn't using that insulin correctly. Whereas a type 1 diabetic, their pancreas completely stops making insulin, requiring a type 1 diabetic to inject themselves with insulin multiple times a day. I myself take four to five injections a day. Whereas someone mm-hmm. with type 2 diabetes might only need one injection a day, or many type 2 diabetics don't even need injections. They take a, a pill called metformin or, or other forms of that. And so really the big difference between the two is the therapy, is the day-to-day of it. Uh, they're both awful okay. things. They're both, you know, something you wouldn't wish upon your worst enemy. But really the difference mm-hmm. is type 1 requires constant checking of the blood sugar and, you know, many injections a day. And type 2 is more of just keeping your diet well and, you know, checking a couple times a day and then, you know, taking that medication. And then, so then there are a couple things that I really, and I, again, I just want to say, I, you know, I'm so thrilled to have you here and I'm really inspired by you because, um, yeah, and not just because, like, you have diabetes, but um, because you're, like, a risk taker and, like, you're just, you're living your life. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's what inspires me. And, you know, you're Mm -hmm. out there taking risks, yeah, and just, and, you know, living life on your terms, which is, Mm -hmm. I think anyone could could learn from that um, because we're ultimately we all, yeah, we all face mortality. Um, Absolutely. And so, yeah, so it's just, it's really, I just thank you for that, for just having the courage to, sure. to live your, live your life, you know, on your terms and, and also, you know, you. And, and inspiring people along the way and, and creating awareness um, for many, many issues. I think not just type one diabetes. Oh, um, absolutely. And, I, would, I would hope that anything that I'm doing would, you know, go across any any type of uh, struggle anybody's facing in their life, especially struggles yeah. that are that are outside of their control. Yeah, mm. yeah. I love how you say that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, that was like my favorite part of reading your bio was the end. Like, um, let's see. Well, I have to go back to that page, but um, sure. Let me get back over there. Just um, who you were saying? Here, let me pull it up again here. Um, mm-hmm. Adventure trains us to expect and accept mishaps and manage risk. It teaches us that shortcomings and tremendous challenges are inevitable. I love that, and it helps us to feel less victimized by our situation. Love that too. It's yeah. it's really interesting. It's um, so I mean I would love to explore that more because I I would love to end like on a on a positive note, and sure. um, but I'm also curious um about I happened to see on Twitter, you had posted I think it was an infographic about like how expensive it is like for like supplies, like diabetic supplies every day. And I, I can't, I'm not sure what that infographic is right now, but I thought that was really interesting because um, it's it kind of points to like, you know, I think some flaws in our healthcare system and that's probably a topic for another Absolutely. conversation, you know, but, but I just, I appreciate you sharing that because yeah. I didn't realize how expensive it was, you know, it was just yeah. um, so. Um, and then yeah, I, also had a, I had a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna kind of touch on that. So we, you know, we live in, yeah. in a, you said yeah. a pretty pretty flawed system where, uh, yeah. where insurance, you know, a, a lot of people can't get coverage because they're a diabetic, and then they go and try and buy this stuff on their own. It can cost them, you know, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month simply to stay alive. Wow. You know, it's not just some dumb well, yeah. because yeah, it's it's literally life or death, and it's it's kind of a sad state. And, and I'd like to see it change, but yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I remember um, that, you know, someone that I know that had type 1 diabetes had to, didn't have insurance and had to, was, was had to get their supplies like from Canada and it was just mm-hmm. this big ordeal and just, you know, yeah. you sort of, you have to do whatever you have to do to stay alive, yeah, exactly. like you're saying, and it's, yeah. there's no option. Down here, so you just have to. Yeah. Down here in Texas, uh, we can go across the border to Mexico and get cheap generic insulin, but it doesn't work the okay. same. You know, it's not, it's not approved. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's, there's ways to do it, but it's just, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a flawed system. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was I was wondering if you're okay. I would love to ask you, and again, this does cover type 1 diabetes, but I think it also just addresses, like, how does anyone maximize their life and, you know, live to the best of, you know, their ability? Um, how do you do, – are you able – are you open to sharing, like, more details about, like – 
how you live your life on a day to day basis. Um, sure. Like, yeah, for instance, I'm curious. Yeah, because I wonder. I'm just in case it helps anyone. Like, how do you like? So I have a question regarding specifically. I mean, that question in general, but also. Let's say, do you ever worry about, like, your blood sugar crashing too low? Like, are you ever in a situation where do you always have to have someone around you? Or do you ever worry about stuff like that? Or do you just plan ahead? Absolutely. Or, yeah, um, I was curious about I, that. Planning ahead is the big part. I think, I think you, you hit the nail on the head okay. there. And that, that's, my, yeah. that's my answer to everything is, is it's always about <laughs> planning. You know, with type 1 diabetes, mm-hmm. we can go anywhere. We can do anything. But we just have to plan ahead. Mm-hmm. You kind of... Once you're diagnosed, once your pancreas stops producing insulin, you, you basically throw most of your spontaneity out the window. Uh, you've got to have mm-hmm. everything in line. Um, my big deal is I have to know when my next, where my next meal is going to come from. I never go anywhere without mm-hmm. knowing that I have something to eat because I've learned that lesson mm-hmm. the hard way. When I don't get food, it, it's, I'm a nightmare to myself and everybody around me. Um, <laughs> but I would say that, that I, you know, everybody with diabetes has that nagging in the back of their head that, that yes, something could go wrong. But I urge mm-hmm. people to, to overcome that. And, and you know, it's, 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 fearlessness is not the lack of fear. It, it's overcoming mm-hmm. the fear that you do have. And so mm-hmm. I think I do yeah. definitely have those concerns that, oh, my blood sugar mm-hmm. might crash, but I just do everything I can to keep, you know, to have everything in place to, to correct it when it does. Like with surfing, one of the toughest mm-hmm. things is, you know, I'm out in the water. I'm, a ra- I'm away from my diabetes supplies. They can't come in the water with me. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's up to me to trust my body to send me the signals that something's going wrong. When you have a low blood sugar, things okay. get weird. Your hearing kind of gets fuzzy. Uh, you know, you start to feel loopy. You kind of people equate it to feeling drunk. Uh, and mm-hmm. so I try to look for those signs, but at the same time, the adrenaline that, that surfing causes kind of masks them. So, yeah, there mm-hmm. is that kind of. That's that nagging sense that oh something could go wrong, but but I just mm-hmm. the person that I am and who I was before diabetes, I think I let prevail over that that sense of, of nervousness. And uh, yeah, okay. and no, I don't. I really don't have to have anybody around me. I really think I can think I'm, I'm able to sort of you know keep myself where I need to be, and I'm, I'm continuing to learn. And, and but yeah, it is yeah. good to kind of let someone wow. know, hey, I'm diabetic, in case you know, in case they catch you, you know, passed out on the beach mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I love how you're saying that, like, kind of like who you were before, like, like, because you, you you talk about this in the beginning when I was reading your bio, like, um, like a diagnosis with type one diabetes did little to dampen your spirit, and mm-hmm. I just love that because I mean, ultimately, that's what everybody is looking for, don't you think? Is kind of like to keep Absolutely. feel like their spirit is still alive, and yeah, Absolutely. And so and yeah. And I really think, like when I, you know, I talked about in that bio, um, you know, when you face your mortality, when it, when it's, when it's, you know, kind of right there in your face, it really kind of makes you take a step back and, and reassess things. And and I think, you know, spirit is a huge part of life altogether. You know, just just being inspired to go out and and live every day to its fullest. And I think, you know, with that sort of facing my mortality, it really just inspired me to 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 make that my main focus. You know, to to really just live as much as I can. Wow. Um, wow. Just, I just, just love it. And it's, I mean, that's, there's really no better message than that. And it kind of makes it more real in a way, doesn't it? Or, I mean, it should be real for all of us, like kind of, but it just, yeah. I would hope that, you know, maybe my experience and because I have sort of been close to, I guess the end in quotations, (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. that, (laughs) yeah, that, you know, maybe my message can, ingrain the reality of it uh, to, to people who maybe haven't had that sort of experience, but, but show them that, you know, this is all we have. This is our life. This is the one that we get to live. So, you know, make the best of it. Yeah. And sort of like appreciating that, like really appreciating that the tension between life and death, and but also that life is like what you should put your focus on because um, you said this somewhere in your bio. I'm not sure I can find it in the moment, but, um, that kind of really, instead of focusing on the fear of death, is is just focusing on like, you know, yeah, yeah, living your life. Everybody, can, there's uh, what is it? I saw a, a statistic the other day. There's like a one in one billion chance. That's six. That's what? Like eighteen zeros. There's a one in one billion chance that you can even exist on this planet as a human being. But there's a one in yeah, one chance wow. you're gonna die. You know, it, wow. it's, it's wow. the marvel is, is that we are alive at all. 
you know, death is imminent. We are mm-hmm. alive, and, that, and we just got to make the most of that. Wow. That just... I don't. I just. I don't think there's any better insight than that. And um, yeah, I remember. I appreciate you saying that. I remember once I had a yeah. friend say to me that um, like li- like being born is like like a dolphin or some kind of fish, or, like swimming up through the ocean and trying to put its, you know, nose through a ring or something. Like it's that rare. Mm-hmm. But uh, your statistic yeah. it makes it more <laughs> even <laughs> yeah. sound more rare. So just just the, appreciate the like just appreciate being alive. Like I appreciate you reminding us all of that and um thank you so much and yeah, um sure. and Zach yeah and then also okay so you you have a campaign on Indiegogo do you want to tell people about that sure. about Miles for Miles? yeah yeah so i am doing a fundraiser for T1 International which is a uh, international nonprofit organization working towards uh, access to insulin for everyone uh, there is a big issue around the world uh, in underdeveloped countries of the lack of insulin and diabetes supplies and just even diabetes education. And unfortunately, in a lot of places, diagnosis of type 1 diabetes is a death sentence. Um, but with the right support, it doesn't have to. Uh, we can, you know, if you, so this, uh, what my fundraiser is doing is, is raising money for Two International. And I am riding my bike. I'm doing a 100-mile bike ride on a single-geared bike. Uh, I choose to ride a single gear because it kind of it's kind of synonymous with diabetes. It's you know my pancreas doesn't work the way it's supposed to. It doesn't work like my body doesn't work like everybody else's, and nor does my bike. My bike mm-hmm. only has one gear, and so I'm riding that 100 mm-hmm. miles uh, right. and yeah. raising money for Q and International. Yeah. And hopefully so it will go towards yeah. And there's a uh, there's a campaign we are running right now called Insulin for Syrians. We are uh, raising money to get insulin over to a lot of the Syrian refugees that are currently in Europe. Um, oh, wow. Because, you know, as they come across and are in these absolutely just, just terrible situations, terrible environments, you know, they, them yeah. getting their their insulin supplies is just is next to impossible. There's a, one guy that works with us at Tuna International whose little wow. brother lives in Syria and is type 1 diabetic. He must walk through a war zone. He has to dodge gunfire on his way oh, to get gosh. his insulin. And it is, if whatever we wow. can do to help people like that, then yeah. you know, anything, a dollar helps, anything helps, sharing the post helps, uh, anything you can find in your heart to give, it, it just helps tremendously. And, yeah, that just really puts it in perspective. And, I mean, wow, what an amazing mission. And, um, Zach, how do people, like, donate? How do they um, – I mean, I'm here on the page. Um, mm-hmm. Do they have to go – can they find it through your main website? Travelbetic. Yeah, it's there. Mm-hmm. It's there on okay. Travelbetic. If you just go to blog and there's a link for charity work. Um, I believe okay. you also have the link here on this page. Um, yeah, I do have it on your have it page. Pinned, yeah. It's pinned on the top of my Facebook page, facebook.com/travelbetic, and as well okay. on the top of my tw- Twitter page, and that's at Travelbetic. Oh, perfect. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you so much for doing that. That's just like a really yeah. amazing mis- a mission. And yeah, so that's um, so again, Zach is doing. Um, it's a fundraiser. Um, it's called Miles for Vials. Love that. It's a bike ride for T1 International, and there are multiple ways that you can find the link. It's on my show page here. If you're listening on your phone, um, you can just click on the show page, and you can see not only um, the link to um, Zach's main website, travelbetic.com, but also you can see the link for the fundraiser, medical fundraising, um, Miles for Vials. So, and then also, it's also on, you can find it through Zach's main website, travelbetic.com, and also, like he was saying, on his Twitter page and also on his Facebook page. Um, Zach, we have um, a few minutes left here. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that people know about? Like, um, you know, whether it has to do with your website, like the media or resources or, you know, any other projects or just anything that – or any, any any even, like, takeaways, anything you want people to make sure that they know? Sure. Yeah, I think just to anybody that's listening that, that you know, doesn't know much about diabetes, uh, I encourage you to either go to my website or just or just simple, simply Google diabetes and, and, you know, educate yourself just slightly. It doesn't – you know, you don't need to spend – 20, 30 minutes reading about it, just know a little bit about the types and, and what it takes mm-hmm. to survive with type 1 diabetes. Because uh, what I would really love to see a world where nobody is ashamed of, of 
you know, taking their injections in public or, or, or testing their blood sugar in public. You know, this is what we have to do to stay alive. And, it, and it's, it's a shame that people feel ashamed and are embarrassed to show it in public. Uh, there was an instance at a, a restaurant in New York recently where the owner put a sign up asking people with diabetes to go into the bathroom to take their injection. And that, is just, oh, wow. you know, that, it, that disgusted the diabetes community. And I would just yeah. love to see a world where we don't have to see that anymore. So just in the slightest, mm-hmm. you know, from listening to this, um, you know, talking to your friends about it, just, just understanding that what diabetes is, is not, just, you know, it's not just something that we can keep under wraps and, and, and you know, go hide and do it in the bathroom. It's literally every second of every day for us. So when you see mm-hmm. someone in wow. public injecting, if it's, if it's, you know, if it, if it stresses you out, look away, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, like I said, I really just want to see a world where it's okay for everybody just to, to do what they need to do in public and not receive scrutiny for it. Um, aside yeah. from that, I would just, I just think with a, I'd like everybody to take away from this, that, you know, like I was saying earlier, um, this is the only life you've got. Make the rest of it. Every day is not promised. Love as much as you can and then love more. <laughs> Oh, Zach, that's just awesome. And um, thank you so much for your wisdom and um, inspiration. And um, yeah, I would I would love to see, I really appreciate you shedding light on that subject because um, it, I, it sounds like it is a stigma and mm-hmm. it shouldn't be because ultimately we, we all, you know, maybe the reason people are feeling uncomfortable is because it reminds them of their own mortality, you know, or that, you know, I, I wonder, yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're all in the mm-hmm. same, ultimately we're all in the same boat. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's going to, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy it while you can, like enjoy the boat exactly. while, it's, while it's floating yeah. and just mm-hmm. e- ha- experience this life. Um, wow. It's such an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. And, um, just, I enjoy all of your adventures and you're going to have many more adventures coming up here. So, oh, yeah. Plenty to come. <laughs> um, enjoy, enjoy. And, um, yeah. thank you so much. And uh, you're welcome back anytime and everyone go check out, um, Zach's main website. It's travelbetic.com. That's T R A V E L B E T I C.com. Traveling and serving with type one diabetes and living life to the fullest. Zach, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Um, Everyone, you've been listening to... (laughs) Bye-bye. Everyone, you've been listening to The Wellness Coach on Blog Talk Radio. Um, Thanks so much for listening, and we hope that you have an awesome, fulfilling, and amazing rest of your day and also your life. Take care. Mm -hmm.